Today, we're going to show you the proper way to drink an espresso, like an Italian. And be sure to stick around till the end because we have a few special surprises. <laughs> Buongiorno e benvenuto. Oggi andiamo a prendere come bevere l'espresso come un italiano. Uh, sorry, I got carried away. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to drink espresso like an Italian. I'm Scott Fisher with Home Grounds, where our mission is not only to help you brew better coffee, but enjoy it right at home. First, a little bit of history. Italy was the first of the European countries to receive and welcome coffee in the Café Florian in Vienna, which opened in the early 17th century. Within a generation or so, coffee had spread first to Vienna and the capital of Austria in the famous Blue Bottle Café, then to Paris at Le Procope, where it became a hotbed of intellectual and political discourse, and finally into London, where this little coffee house called Lloyd's was the favorite place for shipping magnets to meet and discuss how they could protect themselves against losses in case something happened to their ships. Yes, Lloyd's of London began in a coffee house. For the next 200 years or so, coffee throughout Europe was brewed in an immersion method, sort of somewhere between Turkish coffee, which is after all how the Europeans had discovered coffee, up to something very similar to a French press. But in 1884, an Italian from Torino named Angelo Moriondo came up with a patent for a machine that used steam pressure to brew coffee in a much faster method. Over the next 20 years or so, several patents were made offering improvements to Moriondo's original machine until in 1905, a man from Milano named Desiderio Pavoni came up with what became the model for the espresso machine for the 20th century. From that point on, the espresso machine in one form or another became a staple of the Italian cafe culture whether it was rushing into a little cafe on your way to get onto the train to go to work, or whether it was having a relaxing lunch or dinner in a little trattoria or osteria somewhere in a side street in one of Italy's beautiful cities, espresso became part of the way the Italians lived their life. The Italian culture can be expressed in so many different ways, but one of my favorites is in a simple saying, dolci far niente, which means the sweetness of doing nothing. And Although it's certainly forgivable if you have to gulp down an espresso on your way to make a train to get into work, by and large the Italians treat espresso the way you would any kind of an after-dinner beverage, with reverence and with slowness, the sweetness of doing nothing. There's a great story from the 1960s when an Italian businessman decided to treat himself and bought a Ferrari, the icon of high performance and luxury of Italian cars then and now. But he was concerned because his Ferrari, he noticed, would tend to run hot, almost on the verge of overheating if he was stuck in traffic. So he wrote a letter to the factory. The factory responded not from some faceless bureaucrat, but from Enzo Ferrari, il commendatore, the commander himself. He wrote back and said, if your Ferrari starts to run hot in traffic, pull over to the side of the road, go into a cafe, order an espresso, and wait for it to cool down. So when you order an espresso with un caffè per favore, always remember the per favore, the please and thank you. You'll be given a tiny cup, a demitasse cup. You'll probably be given a sugar cube, although throughout most of Europe the sugar cubes are likely wrapped. Uh, there'll be a little bit of a spoon if you decide to use the sugar, and it's by no means mandatory. And if you're having it at breakfast, you might have a little pastry or one of these biscotti. If you ever notice biscotti are kind of hard on the teeth, that's because they're meant to be dunked in the coffee to soften. Whether or not you use the sugar, you'll be given a spoon, and it's for a very important reason. Now, you probably know about crema, that beautiful layer of foam on the top of the espresso as it comes out of the machine. Crema is the result of the hot, high-pressured water going through not only the coffee and coming out with the dissolved solids and some of the fines, but also with the oils that are in the beans. It's not a particularly flavorful thing to drink, so it's actually recommended that you use your spoon and just stir it in just a little bit. Then take up your coffee. The cup should be heated before it's being served to you. And take a sip. If you've 
had espresso at a number of different bars, or in particular, if you've started making your own espresso with different beans, you'll notice that the crema is a different color. It's anything from a very pale sort of straw colored foam on top down to something that's a little bit more ruddy, like a, like a terracotta, and maybe even down to something that's a very dark brown. This is a characteristic of the roast of the beans and to a certain extent of the grind. You'll get a little bit more crema also with um, Robusta beans. If you have a straight espresso or if you're having it after lunch, you may be offered or it may be suggested that you have a little mineral water with it. There are two good reasons for this. One, of course, is that it cleanses your palate if you've had a full, rich Italian meal. Having a little sip of something will refresh you for your coffee. Mm. And also, the bubbles set the way for you to enjoy the espresso a little bit more. In addition to the universal breakfast pick-me-up, espresso is also often served after lunch or even after dinner. And there's a neat twist on this that I learned when my wife and I were in Florence a few years ago. We stumbled on this gorgeous little osteria where there's a woman in chef white standing in the front window making ravioli for all the passers-by to see. Well, we were hooked. We walked in, and they handed us a flute of Prosecco on the way to the table. We had a fabulous meal. But at the end of it, when we ordered our espresso, they asked us if we would like a cafe corretto. Cafe corretto, we asked. It means correct coffee. What is it? Turns out cafe corretto is an espresso into which you are given the option of adding some kind of a little alcoholic zing. It's commonly grappa in Italy, where grappa is a very strong distilled spirit made from the leftover pressings from, uh, from wine. But it can be any other kind of a liqueur or even a cordial. Uh, sambuca, for instance, is very popular. All throughout the Mediterranean, there are these wonderful licorice flavored anisettes like pastis in France and ouzo in Greece. Sambuca is the Italian version of it. But it may be anything. It could be an orange liqueur, or as we discovered at Osteria Pastella in Florence, it can be a house-made cordial flavored with um, pistachio or hazelnuts or even a little bit of carob. To make cafe corretto, you simply put just a little in your cup, as much as you like, swirl it, and enjoy. From its beginnings of about 400 years ago in Venice to the latest cafes and bars in Rome and Florence and Milano and all up and down the peninsula, coffee has played a crucial role in Italian culture. Again, it's, it's really one of many ways that the sweetness of doing nothing, dolce far niente, is so representative of Italian culture. For more information on espresso, including espresso brewing machines and other ways of enjoying it, be sure to click on the link in our description. Do you have a favorite way of drinking espresso? Do you have a favorite set of espresso cups? Is there something that you'd like to share with us about the way that you enjoy espresso? If so, please let us know in the comments. And of course, as always, this is Scott Fisher saying, instead of my usual, how do you take your coffee, for today it's simply, ciao.